under uh, shot selection. Uh, we had felt that if we played very tough defense on them for three or four passes, that we could force them into taking less than the best shots. And uh, there were times that they worked the ball seven, eight, nine, ten passes until they got the shot that they wanted. And uh, the key, I think, to shot discipline is if you get your best shooters to take most of your shots, then I think you've done a, a pretty good job. And if you look at it, Lewis Lloyd, despite all of the things that we were trying to do to keep him from the ball, uh, Lewis got 22 shots off, and, and Pop Wright, who uh, next to Angel, is probably, uh, and of course, I think Dave Johnson's a good shooter. He had a bad night last night, but, but Pop Wright got 17 shots. So, you know, they did a good job of waiting until they got the, the ball to their shooters, and, and uh, I was impressed with the way they battled back. I, they're definitely a much better ball club, I think, than they, than they were a year ago. I think they passed the ball better. I think Lewis Lloyd's unselfishness probably has, has helped that total picture because if you've got your, your uh, leading score is very quick to give the ball up, then other guys are going to be quick to give the ball up. And I think that's the, the strength of their club this year over a year ago is that, that they, they really moved the ball well, whereas a year ago I thought that, that probably guys were looking a little bit uh, mm -hmm. too much for themselves. Well, it was a good game. The Hawkeyes won it, uh, of course, by a score of 77 to 66. And we'll be back to show you filmed highlights of the Iowa Drake game right after this word. Luke, going into the game, what did you feel you had to do against Drake in order to win? Well, I thought we had to play excellent defense against a very talented offensive basketball team. I thought we had to try to keep the ball away from Lewis Lloyd as much as we could. Uh, it isn't just Lewis's uh, scoring that gets you in trouble. It's the, his ability to find the open man. He really does a good job of that. And we, we knew that if we helped on him, we better make sure we rotated quickly in the other positions on defense uh, or he'd find somebody open near the basket area. And I, I think we did a pretty good job of, of that. We made, we made him work very hard to get the ball. And, uh, uh, you know, he didn't have the same kind of shooting night that he's had. But some of that... I think may be due to the fact that if you make a guy work a little bit harder than what he's accustomed to, then he'll tend to run down a little bit and become a little bit tired, and all of a sudden those shots that are knocking the bottom of the net out are hitting the front rim, and, and I think in the late going, uh, some of those shots were, were coming up short, and, and that's uh, to be expected if you're you know, having to carry the load that Lewis uh, has to carry for him. He gets 15 rebounds and you know, does a lot of things uh, uh, for them. Uh, I think he tired a little bit and, and some of our guys tired a little bit and, and uh, I think he had to work a whole lot harder than, than what some of our people did uh, uh, because of all the things that he has to do for him. Okay, let's take a look at some of the uh, film highlights of the game as was played yesterday uh, afternoon, Saturday afternoon. Luke, we'll let you take it away here. Uh, okay, this is uh, Bobby Hanson now in, in the ball game, Mark Gannon. Uh, uh, Vince Dickens with the ball, Kevin Boyle underneath to Gannon. Good inside feed. Uh, Mark missed the easy one, but Kevin Boyle followed it up uh, uh, for the for the two-pointer. Ball being passed ahead here now to Steve Wake. Good control out of Steve. Uh, pass to Bobby Hanson. Missed the shot. Uh, good percentage shot though. And here a piece of garbage for uh, Mark Gannon. Uh, Drake player tried to save the ball, and it went off somebody's feet. This is. Uh, uh, Vince Dickens over to Bobby Hanson. Missed shot, but I think we end up coming up with it. Vince Dickens underneath on the rebound. Uh, Vince uh, did an excellent job uh, for us. Uh, Jim, uh, we feel that Vince can be a great player, uh, especially if we can get the concentration out of him uh, on a regular basis right on throughout the ball game. Uh, Kevin Boyle with the ball now. Vince Dickens, good patience here. We should be moving. Finally, Drew uh, now inside the mark, and <laughs> Mark was a little bit off balance. Uh, uh, gave it out to Bobby Hanson, got his own. Uh, mark got the rebound. Bobby Hanson gets the rebound off the glass uh, for two. There we got, uh, what, three or four shots, I guess, right. at the bucket, and finally got it in the hole. Uh, Jeff Hill, I think this is. For, right, Jeff Hill. For uh, Drake, Bobby Hanson playing defense on him. Lewis Lloyd now going to the outside. Jump shot by Lloyd, uh, good touch on the ball. Very soft touch. He, on he really gets the ball up nice on the arc, and uh, and everything is up there with uh, feather touch. Mark Gannon uh, on the inbounds play here. Vince Dickens over to Bobby Hanson. Uh, Kevin Boyle, 
checking the thing out now. Drake in a 2-3 zone. Uh, Bobby Hansen uh, trying to get things together. Here comes the screen for him. Uh, back over, however, to Brookins. Uh, Steve Waite now sets that pick for him. Bobby drives it off and hits the jump shot under uh, excellent control. Uh, he could have passed or shot the ball from there, and that's what we'd like to have him do. There's the screen again. Another shot by Hanson. This one, no good, but uh, it's batted up by Brookins and somebody else. And now he comes to mind to take the lead. Yeah. This is Brookins uh, hitting Crafterson now in the ball game. Over to Brookins again. Vince steps into the uh, shot and hits that uh, perimeter jump shot. Good defensive play here. Bobby Hanson with the ball. Pass ahead to Mark Gannon. And the two freshmen combined for a, an excellent play there. Uh, and at this point, uh, we're up, up 11. We got off to a very slow start. I thought we were a little bit tight and tense at the beginning. But we loosened up uh, Brookins with the drive here, took the ball into that lane area. Later in the game, uh, made that same move and then got a great pass off, uh, assist pass inside for the lay-in. This is uh, Brookins again from uh, Boyle. Oh, looks good, isn't it? It's an 18-footer. Vince has excellent uh, uh, touch. Uh, the one thing he needs to do in his shooting a little bit uh, uh, better, Jim, is he has to catch the ball bent a little bit better than what he's doing. Kenny Arnold for one of the few <laughs> times that he was in the ball game, missed the shot, but Kevin Boyle comes up with the rebound underneath and, and puts it back in. Uh, Kenny Arnold now uh, bringing the ball down, looking to get set up. Uh, uh, Brookins on the other side, the uh, interior motion right now for zone that Drake's in. Uh, Kenny does a good job of bringing the two Drake players together and finds uh, Vince in the seam where one of those two players uh, normally would have been. Uh, and Vince uh, nails it. Mark Gannon, uh, Vince Brookins over the top. Kevin Boyle drives into the gap like we'd like to have him do. Vince Brookins to Mark Gannon, missed it, but it follows it up. Uh, <laughs> for the easy lay-in again, and, and we're really not hitting that first shot uh, as much, uh, Jim, as we are the second. Steve Wade on a missed shot, but again, Kevin Ball puts the thing in, and, yeah, this you know, our, our percentage, I guess, is a little bit uh, deceiving. We did not shoot well the second half, but yet we shot 39 points, and, and I think our per-possession per scoring was pretty good. Uh, we missed a number of first shots, but we got second and third efforts to get it in. Steve Waits again, and good job here of, of uh, hitting Kenny Arnold, who floated over to the right side on that interior feed. His man was helping out on Gannon. He fanned out, which is what we like to have him do. Pass ahead, Boyle to Brookins, and Vince nails the, uh, the jump shot again. He can really shoot the ball. <laughs> uh, here's a good out-of-bounds play. Uh, excellent screen by Great. Steve Waite and, and a lay-in for uh, Mark Gannon. Inbounds, uh, this is Kenny Arnold now with the basketball. We're getting set up and whatever we're trying to do offensively here. Brookins on the wing, uh, nails another two again, and, and it seems like everything that Vince uh, is like 100 for 100, right? Yeah, <laughs> is flashing in the bottom of the net. 54-40 uh, Iowa, this is Kevin Ball now. Drake coming out and trying to force the tempo a little bit. Bobby has some great feet underneath here Super. to uh, Steve. Uh, Wait, moved in. The biggest lead uh, right there. Uh, we, the one that gave us the 60 there, it's unfortunate that the cameraman was having to change his, uh, uh, put new film in at that point, but Vince Brookins had just gotten a slam dunk. Off that the field. Really, the really let the crowd out. There's Bobby Hanson on a good drive, and what I, I was really happy to see on that one, Bobby has tended to come flying down the court in that situation, Jim, and, and uh, get a little bit out of control, and our feeling on the fast break is that the first uh, two-thirds of the court, speed is important. The last third, control is important. And, and if you notice there with Bobby, he wasn't coming barreling full speed. He came under control. The defender made a little fake at him, which I think otherwise Bobby would have gotten airborne and gotten in trouble. Instead, he just maintained his composure, took the ball right into the basket, and uh, he's going to be an excellent player for us. It's just a, just a matter of, of some playing time and, and some experience. Okay, you have to say this to the Bulldogs. We, we couldn't show all parts of the game, but uh, they came out uh, and fired up the last half, cut your lead to four, and then, then you, of course, expanded and exploded and went up to 19. Well, and I thought Bob made some good adjustments at half uh, halftime, too. Uh, they forced our hand in the second half uh, 
uh, we've been effective with the man to man, much more so than the zone, I thought, in the first half. Uh, we came out second half, and they isolated Lewis Lloyd on one side and, and uh, got the ball to him, and he drove it on weight and, you know, had, had us a little bit of difficulty. So we were forced to go to the zone because of that. When we did get back to some man to man, then, then, you know, it wasn't as easy to come back to that type of a, of a play on their part. Uh, the other thing, he came out in the zone, which I think upset our, our timing a little bit. And then uh, thirdly, when they, when they were obviously in a little bit of trouble down 19, he got the timeout, came out in some full court pressure. And of course, we're not <coughs> nearly a, as effective against the full court pressure with, uh, with Kenny Arnold and, and Ronnie Lester out of the, the game. We had a hard time taking advantage of situations that probably normally we could. So I thought that, uh, that he did a number of things to, that really helped them uh, uh, turn the tide in a couple situations where we could have blown them out otherwise. Okay, well, uh, a game that, uh, you know, got up to 19, usually expected to expand one way, but I guess it's to the credit of the other team, too, if they can come back and make it a tighter ball game, and Iowa wins it 77 to 66, and Luke, you're not going to have much time to relish the cake or the icing on the cake, because it all gets for real if you're in a conference, of course, which you're what you aim for is a conference season, and they don't come much tougher in the Big Ten Conference, and that's exactly what Iowa has to plunge into with a record of 9-0, and the only undefeated team in the Big Ten. And we'll be talking about that on the upcoming schedule and the Iowa basketball team in general right after these words. The Big Ten keeps demonstrating over and over and over what a rugged conference it is. Uh, I think uh, the latest stats are the Big Ten has won something like 76% of its ball games. Uh, there have been a few upsets and a few reversals along the way, but... Uh, Illinois, for instance, over in the uh, Hawaiian Classic uh, last night, uh, beat Louisville, beat them pretty handily. Beat and Louisville uh, by uh, 13, and Louisville's the, you know, not too bad a basketball team. Uh, they've they've been rated uh, pretty much all year long. Uh, you play one of these, yeah. yeah. I think Louisville's one of the better teams around. They beat them 13, so it didn't seem like it was, you know, a game that went right to the wire. They pretty much handled it. Yeah. Uh, They've, they've lost twice, one to Missouri in overtime when they had the ball game won with uh, like a minute and some to go. They had a five-point lead and blew the lead. Uh, and then Marquette got them, uh, uh, I guess it was a week ago. Uh, Illinois, I still think, could be one of the real dark horses in, in this uh, league race. They have all of their people back from a year ago. It's the same club that they, uh, that they had a year ago. I think it was a good team a year ago that lost a lot of close games, but generally you lose close games when you're inexperienced and when you get that year of experience, you, you learn from those uh, uh, mistakes. We're, we've had good luck against uh, Illinois in the time that I've been at Iowa. I think we've won, what, eight out of ten, I guess, yeah, and, yeah. and when we, we've beaten them at Illinois, uh, four out of five. And yeah, 19... in the lineup. Uh, I do think, though, that, uh, that we'll play well. Uh, we have a, a number of Illinois players who always look forward to, to uh, getting a chance to play right. against the Illini. It does something to them when they get over there in the assembly hall. Yeah, they, it's, uh, they, they feel that it's uh, like their home court, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, for some reason. And of course, Kevin Boyle, uh, and Steve Crafts and Kenny Arnold, uh, we have a number of, uh, number of players who who are from uh, uh, Illinois, and I'm sure that they're looking forward to getting back uh, to their home state. Okay, now that's Thursday night over at Champaign as you open up a tough uh, two-game road trip, and then at Michigan, Ann Arbor. And Michigan's been playing uh, well. Mm -hmm. I think if, if I were to look at the preseason play, the two surprise teams to me would be uh, uh, Michigan, uh, I think, has played better than what I expected them to play. I don't know what their record is, but it's uh, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other surprise team to me would be Minnesota. I did not expect them to be quite as strong as they are. They won the Pillsbury Classic last night, beating an excellent Texas A&M team. Texas A&M can play with anybody in the country, and Minnesota beat them, uh, I think, you know, by six, seven, eight points. Uh, in addition to that, they played a Rutgers team that's supposed to be pretty good in the opener and, and won, what, 90? 
<laughs> the title last night, but the real classic. A guy by the name of Isaiah Thomas is most yeah, valuable I player. I think you've heard of Isaiah Thomas, huh? I think so. I, I, <laughs> at least we, yeah, even though we, we didn't get him, uh, at least my assessment of his ability to play was right. He sure was right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, most valuable player in the Cabrillo Classic, Isaiah Thomas. We'll be back with more on the Lute Olsen Iowa Basketball Show right after this. Until then. <laughs> These are the Carpenters from Newton. And the young gentleman right behind me has a name of three. Uh, because you're the third, right? Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and Scott is the uh, little guy over here. Scott, nice to see you. Scott Carpenter and Free Carpenter. And Free, I understand, is one of your ball boys in the yeah, team. He's, he's one of our ball boys. And if you notice with both of these little guys here, we've got uh, a Golden Hawk there. They're both uh, probably the two youngest members of the Golden Hawk uh, Club at Iowa. They're members of the President's Club. And, and uh, their mother is heading up the arena, the arena committee uh, involved in the arena committee. So. Mm -hmm. We're very happy to have people like this behind our program. Well, you make those Hawkeyes win, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next week on the Lou Olsen Show. We hope with two victories. The Lou Olsen Show has been brought to you by Bandai.